Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to style the quiz page. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it quiz.css. There we go. Let's link it to our HTML file. Let's say link. It's within the static folder. From there, we're going to grab the quiz.css. Uh, um, we are going to have our universal selector again. So let's grab all the margins, set it to zero, grab all the padding for all the elements. Set it to zero, grab the border box, uh, sorry, box sizing, always box sizing, set it to border box. Now for the body, we are going to apply a background image. So I'm going to set the height, oops, I'm going to set the height to 100 VH. 100 VH is uh, 100 viewport height. So this starting from this line all the way to the bottom of this page that is 100 viewport height so 100 viewport height is the height that is visible to the user and 100 viewport width is the width visible to the user so we wanted to grab all that so the image is stretched and the image covers the entire page that the user can see i'm going to change the font family to Verdana uh, let's so now let's grab the background image uh, we know that we need to do URL and uh, it is quiz dot BG, uh, underscore BG dot JPEG I'm gonna set the background size to cover as well as the background position so where are you background uh, position I'm gonna set it to center and uh, I'm going to say background repeat to no repeat. Uh, I'm going to apply a line height property as well. Line height property uh, does exactly the same thing that you have. Uh, you have an equivalent of this in Microsoft Word that when you have a paragraph, you, you change the height from one line to the line below it. This does the same thing, and I'm going to set it to 1.8. Now, where this value is coming from, there is a lot of <laughs> philosophy behind it. The simple thing is that the uh, HTML page, it has a default font size. That is 16 pixels. So if you grab 16 pixels and multiply it by 1.8, that is going to be the line height. Uh, something like that. Like 1.8 of that 16 pixels. All right, I'm going to say display flex just because I'm trying to uh, um, uh, arrange them, trying to lay out our, uh, our website. So I'm going to say flex direction. Display flex is usually applied on a parent which has some children inside of it. By default, the flex direction is row. Uh, I do have a complete course on flex and grid and SAS if you want to check that out. I, I do create very cool websites. And uh, when you say flex direction columns, the align items properties is just going to align our items horizontally in the center of the page. That's just um, considered a good practice. And justify content is going to align them vertically when flex direction is column. And I'm going to say space around just to provide some space around it. Let's just come here. Um, so here is our quiz page. There we go. You can see that we are making progress. So this is our background image and this is the line height that I told you about. We could take a look at the line height. So if I go to body, if I go to computed, um, let's just grab that, remove it. Um, uh, it's 28.8 pixels. So if I grab the calculator, I'm just gonna, I just wanna make sure that I'm right. 1.8, there we go. So because the default font size for an HTML web page by the browser that's not something that i define it's something that comes from the factory it's 16 pixels and 1.8 basically says 1.8 times that 16 pixels which is 28.8 and in here you can see that it says 28.8 1.8 times that so i just wanted to show you and make sure there we go close the calculator now I'm going to move on with the styling because uh, they're very simple. We know the body has, um, we have a div with a class of content. I'm going to give it a padding. Wh which one is this div? This is this div. Div of the question and the answer that we are trying to style. 
So I'm going to say 20 pixel for padding. The background color uh, is going to be RGBA. So for red, I'm going to say 255. For uh, green, I'm going to say 255. For blue, 255. But for alpha channel or transparency, 0.65. So it is 35% transparent and 65% block like. What is the opposite of transparent? It is that. <laughs> um height we have 300 pixels i'm going this is the box where the question and the answer are there so we have the height of 300 pixels the width is going to be 700 pixels text align oops text align uh, come on buddy uh text align center save that Let's reload the page. This is the part that I've, I was just styling. Perfect. Uh, let's go and style the question div. Remember, it is the div that contains this paragraph. I'm going to give it a margin of 15 pixels all around, a padding of 15 pixels all around. Uh, these values, they usually, um, they're experimental whenever i create when i created it well i provided it 30 that was a lot 10 that was small 20 that was still big but 15 was somehow good to my eye i mean whenever it comes to css uh it's very 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 subjective so you can't go anywhere about this so you can style in almost 1 million possible ways this web page but this is just my styling. You, I, I did provide you with two courses on HTML5 and CSS3. That is why I'm speeding through this. The reason that I provided those was not to get hung up on these specific values and uh, singular uh, properties proper, and the singular property. Uh, I want you, uh, I do encourage you to go ahead, change the styling, come up with your own style for this full stack application. I encourage it a lot so that's completely up to you buddy buddies um, within here I'm gonna grab a font weight come on buddy so font weight I'm gonna set it to 400 again this is highly subjective highly un highly opinionated I would say everybody has a different taste and style uh, some people have uh, like a very very good taste others like myself they don't have that good of a taste so I'm gonna say font size uh, 25 pixels and the reason that I that I'm trying to style this is because I just wanted to take away go away from that very rigid and dry like user interface and come up with like a little bit of an interesting one I did try certainly so let's save that reload the page you can see that the question is bigger it has some padding some margin and the font size is bigger uh, let's move on to the answer so this is going to be the diff I'm gonna say text align uh, center as well as font size um, let's increase it to uh, 20 pixels these are the properties for the um, for the paragraph within this diff so this is a descendant selector whenever you pass in a space uh, descendant selector which means that this paragraph is a descendant of this div this element with the class of answer and if you take a look at that you have an element with a class of answer paragraph is a descendant of it that's why it's called a descendant selector answer and I did misspell this ANS there we go so let's move on I'm gonna say background color I'm going to copy this RGBA code for this color. Feel free to change it. And I'm going to say color white as well as some padding, 10 pixel. Save that. Let's run this. There we go. So basically, I did this. Now, let's move on to the button. What is the button that I'm trying to style? It is this button, uh, the one which is responsible for next question and start over. That is basically one button depending on where we are in our loop, it is going to change. So button, let's say background buttons in uh, HTML, they have a default background. So I'm just going to say none. And then they do have a default border as well. I'm going to say none. And I'm going to add a border of myself 
so border right let's go two pixels which is kind of thick I'm gonna go one pixel white and the style has to be solid I'm gonna do the same border on the bottom as well okay there we go I'm gonna style our anchor elements as well so again display inline block so they accept margin and padding so I'm gonna say padding 10 pixel for top and bottom 20 pixel for left and right text decoration is going to take away that underline so I'm gonna say none you can change it to something else so if you if you want that underline to be dashed you can change it to dashed you can change it to dotted you can change it to double to whatever you want I'm just gonna say none I don't like it I'm gonna say font size uh, 15 pixels and color white save that so both uh, this button and the anchor tags have uh, must be style there we go so you can see that this is next question now now this is like a little bit more interesting to look at rather than that st uh, that design that we had before which was actually no design now let's grab the div with a class of links I'm gonna give it a width rather large one so I'm gonna say 1400 pixels the reason that I'm doing it 1400 is because I want to provide this home all the way on the left of the page and remove this question anchor tag all the way to the right of the page that's why and I'm gonna say display flex this is the property that is, that handles these kind of stuff very admirably so we have display flex by default flex direction is row so when it is row justify content happens on the horizontal when it was column that is all that is everything you need to know about flex by the way when it is column these two values they uh, uh, apply on different axes so justify content applies on vertical because it's column and align items applies on horizontal because it's uh, uh, because it is column so justify content directly depends on the uh, the direction of the flex if flex is horizontal justify content applies horizontally if uh, flex direction is column it applies vertically that is something that you should keep in mind whenever you want to work with uh, flexbox and that is everything you need to know about it now it has a very cool uh, value for justify content that is space between and this is going to spread apart two elements the most from each other so if you just say sp space between one is going to be on one side of the screen the other one is going to be on the other side that is the coolness of this property this value and uh, finally I'm just going to grab the links within this container uh, so let's do let's do another descendant selector which by the way is a bad practice in CSS but I'm I'm doing it anyway because you need to have specific classes for whatever it is that you're trying to style this is considered a bad practice in CSS but let's do it anyway just because we can and I'm gonna say font size uh, 15 pixels save that there we go so we are basically done with this as well so I'm just gonna keep on clicking so we go to our final question and we can see that start over button being styled as well there oh, oh I just missed it just keep on clicking uh, this should be it there we go so you can see that uh, as, uh, instead of having that very boring style this is a little bit more interesting to look at of course you can always improve there is always room to improve so with this our lecture comes to an end in the next one we are going to style the add question page see you then